Well, welcome back, my fantastic artistic numismatic friends. Master Temple here, and we're going to do a quick painting. This is about 20 minutes long. We're going to be filmed in real time. I may just edit out. I'll have clean brushes and things like that. Um, yeah, there you go. That knows what to do, folks. You know what to do. Great. Um, one question I get asked all the time is, how quick can you do a painting? And this is basically a, a, a very simple little painting of a, of a mountain scene and a, a little tree and, and some other stuff. And if you remember back to, to last week's video where I said we don't, we don't really want to mix mud, we do mix mud in this one and I'll show you what to do with that. There's a little mistake that we, we make sometimes and, uh, and um, I have to rectify. It happens. So uh, just stick around and, and I'll, I'll let you know when that happens. Right, so I'll also be asking questions, asking, answering questions from the 1K uh, giveaway. The, the, the people that, that ask me questions in there, I'll be answering them. But that's fantastic. Right, so again, these are these are oil paints, and this is a, a prime canvas coated in liquid white. And the colours we're using are mainly Bob Rosses, some Windsor and Newtons, um, but but mainly Bob Rosses ones. Now, what happened was, what happened with this painting was, I, I was doing a big, big grey winter scene, a big mountain winter scene, and uh, it was going great, it was cracking. And if I if I find a picture of what I finally painted, I'll, I'll pop it up at the side right about now. But, uh, but what it was is I, I started recording that and, and painting that and then I got called away, a bit of an emergency, so I, so I had to get called away. So I paused the camera, went and did what I had to do and when I came back, uh, I resumed the painting, but the, uh, the camera had died on me. And when I uh, got the camera back up and running and, and, and loaded again, all the all the previous uh, work that I'd done had uh, had gone as well. I'd been deleted. I couldn't retrieve it, which I'm quite quite annoyed at. But um, hey, oh, it it happens, and uh, I'll not be making that mistake. Again. I probably will make that mistake again. You know, know what I'm like, folks. But uh, we live and learn. So I I pulled out this little tiny canvas and thought well we'll just quickly rattle through a nice quick little painting very simple very straightforward but, but very striking as well and anybody can do it anyone with a desire to achieve can paint like this so there we go filmed in real time again i just gonna edit out washing the brushes and, and uh, mixing color on on the palette but it's uh, it's um it, it's fairly it's fairly straightforward right so what we've got here is a nice little mountain. Uh, I've, I've been talking for so long that I've not even talked about the painting yet. And we're just going to highlight and shadow that now. Yeah, so we, we put the base colour of the mountain on, very dark colour. It's a dark grey colour. Dark, well, it look, looks black on the canvas because there's got liquid white on there. It'll turn a, a grey colour as we've blended it out. And we've hit the light side of the mountain with just pure titanium white very gentle on the on the palette knife pretend you're a whisper when you're applying this kind of paint um on the highlights and shadow sides and then on the high uh, sorry on the on, on the shadow side we have taken white paint a tiny bit of prussian blue only a tiny amount not much we don't want to really darken this uh, this mountain off and again just very gently ever so lightly and we think about shapes of the mountain um, and obviously the colours that the mountain is going to be. And we can come back here and, and redefine some of these these edges, as you see. Now this this, this canvas, it's only a small one, I think it's about a foot in, it's a, it's a foot high and I think it's about eight inch wide. I don't think it's as, uh, as wide as some of the other canvases we have, but it's, it's only a small one. It came in a pack of three. And it's been the smallest one. Yeah, quite annoyed that I didn't record the other one. But still, hey -oh, it happens. Right, so let's get into a question where we're just highlighting this mountain. And this one's from Chris Harrison. And uh, he's been a long-time subscriber and always comments on every video. And I, I, I love looking out for his comment and, and reading them. And 
apart from the usual stuff like congratulations and this that and other his, his question is have I ever been to an art gallery and asked myself I really like that painting and I must try something like that when I get back home right so so yes I have uh, Chris it's not just art, art galleries as such so I, I do try and sneak into some art galleries from time to time and have a, have a bit of a look around but um but there's lots of online art galleries that you can have a look at as well um, on the Facebook groups as well I'm, I'm a member of a, a fair few um, art um, art groups where, where like-minded individuals we all all share as artwork and we can uh, we can see other people's artwork and and you can draw inspiration from that as well so I, it, it does happen quite quite a lot um, Never copy anybody else. Never copy anybody else. Not even, not even the legend Eddie Bob Ross. You don't copy. Uh, and and that's the thing. One, one person put on one of the, one of the, one of the paintings I once. If you can, if you remember the painting I did, that was the lighthouse. But it was like a post that I put on YouTube where, where the lighthouse was in rough stormy seas. I think somebody commented on that, on on a face. Uh, Facebook group saying that um, Bob Ross he um, he said you do yourself the most injustice by by just copying what he does you, you, you've got your own talents and your own mind and your own uh, your own vision of how your artwork should be and, and and that's how you do it so so you can take what what people do as as inspiration and then you just then you just add your little bits and pieces to it so as yeah, but I'm always trying to draw on inspiration. Like last week's video was the uh, the, the postcard from Cali. How, how did you find that, folks? Anyway, did you enjoy that? Right, so we've misted it up the base of this mountain. Thanks for that question, Chris. That's, that's fantastic. Um, but yeah, so we've, we've, we've misted it up the base of this mountain. And, uh, and that will give us a, a layer of depth that will separate this middle ground material so on a small little round brush so we've got to use some small brushes on these small canvases we're just hitting in with sap green and every now and again a touch of browns maybe a touch of blues some indications of some little trees that live far away not far far away but just far enough that you can't make out individuals as such just just basic shapes basic colors and I'm going to try and make it look like it's going around a little bit of a corner. So towards the side, we want them to get bigger and darker as they get closer to us. It's all about perspective as well. Of course, we'll have some water down here. Water is one of the most beautifulest things you can paint in this technique. It's so simple, so easy. And um, it's very, very effective as well. So dry brush, just pull straight down because the canvas is wet, we can do that. If this was a dry canvas, we'd, we'd have a hard time trying to do this. And then just generally, uh, generally, gently, just, just tickle that across. No pressure, no pressure at all. There we go. And then we can come back in here. And just a touch of mud where these trees would live on. A little bit of a bank. There we go. Just a little bit of Van Dyke brown right on the edge of the, the palette knife. And of course it comes towards us. So we're making a little bit wider down at this end. Happy days. Right, let's have a look for another question. Right, lots of people wishing me all the best and congratulations and stuff. Um, which I do, I absolutely thank you all for that. That's amazing stuff. Right, Angela. So it's a 55 AE Angela S. Right. Um, happy birthday an awesome giveaway question tea or coffee and which type of biscuit so a couple of a double double parted question there um, tea or coffee tea and coffee I like half and half in, in the same cup no I'm only kidding you there now. <laughs> um, uh, coffee on a morning big pint mug of coffee on a morning and, uh, and, and Lord knows I need it to get me going on the morning get me up and, and ready to face the world so a big big cup of coffee and through the day occasionally i might have a, a, a cup of coffee every now and again dinner time at work or something like that but um, I, I am fond of a, a nice sweet tea 
from time to time and uh, I, I do like a, a, a nice tea I like decaf tea on a on an evening I do drink de decaf tea on an evening um, one of my favorite teas if you think back to the guilty pleasure question that I answered uh, on last week's video I have drunk licorice tea before and I, I do find that quite quite tasty though it, <laughs> it can do something for you if you drink too much of it but yeah um, so, so a bit of everything I suppose and biscuits I I, I'm, I love biscuits I'm, I'm not terribly a fond lover of chocolate I've got to be really in the mood for chocolate but I do love a good biscuit a digestive biscuit with a cup of tea uh, it's got to be Yorkshire tea as well um, uh, of knobs and, and, and things like that oh, oh, oat really and again, if he's got chocolate on, I will take it. I will, I will, I will, I will tackle it. But I've got to be in mood for for that. But fantastic question, Angela. Right. So we progress forward now in this painting. We've got ten minutes in, and um, we've nearly got it done, haven't we? So we we'll just put a little bit of a, a peninsula on the right hand side, a tiny thin one, and a bigger one on the the, the left hand side, and that will this will lead your eye. It will take your eye on a little bit of a wonder across the water there so a few little highlights just the same colors that's on the on the trees in the background maybe a little bit lighter because because you can see a little bit more color and a little bit more definition but not not much and uh, we'll we'll come back in and we'll we'll put some uh, some water lines and sticks and twigs in fact we'll put out a big stick here and like the caption says there have you seen my other painting videos please do go check them out there's there's lots of them now. <laughs> I'm trying trying to put them all into a playlist or such, but um, time eludes me sometimes. So yeah, we'll put a little little old stick here, something for the old kingfisher to sit on and and, and look out on this uh, this fantastic view. And of course, a little bit down in the bottom for for reflection. And just where we've got that muddy colour on the brush, we'll uh, we'll put some bank, some mud, some dirt for all these. For these little shrubs and trees to sit on and then we'll come in here straight little water line just a little tiny bit of, of, of liquid white paint right on the edge of the knife and we're trying to cut a hole straight through the canvas we won't hurt the canvas quite tough it's like denim there we go a couple of ripples here where the old pike has jumped out the old trout <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Right, let me look for another question while, while we're doing this. Hey, before we before we answer this next question, I'm just going to put a little tree trunk right there. We'll have a nice, nice big happy little tree right there, and we'll we'll, we'll grow this tree off the uh, the old fan brush. That's where this tree is going to be. Right, so load it full of sap green and a tiny bit of blue. And if the paint is not sticking to the canvas as such, we may add a little bit of paint thinner just to slide it straight off the fan brush, straight onto the canvas. Like the golden rule used, well, it still is, a thin paint will always stick to a thick paint. And we've, we've applied some layers of paint already. And again, just zigzag this, this fan brush from side to side. The evergreen tree will live in there. You've just got to shake him free. Scare him loose. Nah, this 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 tree looks like he's got a bit of a crook in him. Maybe maybe he got stood on or something like that by the deer or a fisherman and see who was growing up. I don't know. But that's it. You can make little stories. It makes little stories up in your painting. It helps you compose. A little bit of highlight on some of these tree trunks. So we painted the far side of the tree. Now we'll paint the middle of the tree, which is the trunk, and then we'll come back in with a little bit of highlight colour will highlight this one so the highlight is just this dark color just gone straight into a little bit of um, cad yellow and of course it'll make a nice dark green color now we don't want to overdo the highlights evergreen trees usually are quite dark anyway and uh, we can build up several layers of highlights as well when this is done right now back to this question Kian Regan he asks me um, what is your favorite A to Z 10p coin um, I think I've answered this one on every single giveaway from every, you know, you, 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 you know, same question, Kian, and uh, it, I can't remember what I say. It changes on a daily, 
daily basis so um I applaud you for keep asking that. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite fond of the Robin 10p at the moment. I'm quite fond of that. But since we were talking about tea and coffee, why not tea as well? Why not tea for, for, for Master Temple? Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Kian. Right, so we're working on this. And we build up the highlights. There. Yeah. And again, if the paint is not sticking to the to the canvas, tiny touch of paint thinner, or you could even use liquid white, liquid clear, just to just to thin it down. If you use liquid white, it'll brighten your painting up. If you use liquid clear, it will um, it will obviously slide and leave a little bit of a glossy finish to your to your art as well. Just like that. Don't overdo, or you'll mix mud like like we said. Maybe we will mix mud. Maybe we should mix mud. Then we can show you what to do. Great. So we're about 16 minutes in, quarter of an hour in, and we've uh, we've nearly got a finished painting, really, haven't we? I'm just going to put a little bit more of a tree trunk in that gap there. That gap there, it'll, uh, that's where that's where the old robin that we've just been talking about might want to go and and have a little bit of a kip through the day or through the night, I don't know but yeah, right, so we're going to just put some highlights on these little shrubs down here the bushes and all that lot and while I do the highlights keep an eye out for mixing mud like I've said before, we've got lots and lots of layers of paint on this canvas now and I'm trying to stick some highlights just underneath this uh, evergreen tree and it's it's not really working, is it? I'm trying my best there try my best and it, it just doesn't look right to me anyway so what we'll do we'll come back in with a knife and just scrape off the excess the value of what we've painted will still remain in the canvas but because we've scraped it off we can start again there and there's a little plug for the Etsy store all my artwork will go on the Etsy store and I, I, I do I, I applaud everybody that comes over just as a look likes a painting you know, you know, when uh, p potentially buys a painting, it means so much to me. It really does. Right. So with that mud mixed out of the way, we can come back in here and, and, and drop in a few little highlights, some some thinner paint. So again, we, we can add a little bit of paint thinner to that and uh, and just thin it down. There we go. Right. A little bit of mud to keep all this up. Right. Also. Oh, fall straight into water and we don't want that we don't want a big splashing of water now do we Not now we've, we've worked so hard in putting this tree up and all these shrubs around it little robin's uh, home and all that lot <laughs> get on with it Dan stop talking gibberish so we put a little bit of uh, wood down there and with the fan brush with that green colour on we can just we're, we're just going to kill the the the, the edge really so, few little few little ferns there a little bit of reflection and, and kill that straight edge that's along that uh, where the, those shrubs are still talking gibberish I know there we go just like that so yeah 18 minutes in a little bit of a waterline now and we've about got a finished painting haven't we it's a quick simple little one this one quite effective as well you can see for miles and miles you can pick out a big old mountain in the background nice little bit of foliage in the foreground and the tranquil serenity of the water as well nice flat water still water yeah be a nice place to go fishing this it certainly would couple of ripples here where the old trout jumped out after a mayfly there we go so how did you find this one folks please let me know leave me a nice big comment we'll sign this one down there and that knows what to do as well my fantastic friends that knows what to do happy days so until next time take care of the sen stay safe and as always happy days <laughs>